So let's start at the beginning. What is borderline personality disorder anyway? I'm Rose Skeeters, host of From Borderline to Beautiful, a show about hope and recovery for BPD. Borderline personality disorder has a jarring stigma associated with it. The diagnosis is often kept hush-hush, which doesn't make any sense because it has a good prognosis. As a provider, I find myself being the first person to explain BPD to clients that have it and the first person to tell them that they have it and that they can get better. This doesn't make any sense either. Without the truth, people can't change. I often wonder whether the misdiagnosis of BPD as bipolar disorder or PTSD is because of the stigma. Even psychiatrists and psychologists are affected by the stigma. It's as if they wish we could have anything but a personality disorder. So they'll even prescribe us insanely strong medications like Seroquel and combine them with mood stabilizers and SSRIs and anti-anxiety medications. This huge cocktail of just stuff to sedate us instead of actually trying to treat the diagnosis. It's mind blowing, right? Well, to me it is. So how easy is it to diagnose then? Well, get this. If you have severe abandonment issues, meaning if you're terrified of people leaving you and of being alone, and if you cut yourself or hurt yourself, you have an 88% chance of having borderline personality disorder. 88%. So really, it's not that hard to figure out clinically. Let's dissect this a bit. BPD has three sectors, right? So the first is interpersonal relationships. This is the part of the disorder that really separates BBD from other diagnoses. So what does that mean, right? People with BPD have intense, unstable relationships. You'll hear about this push-pull, I love you, I hate you dynamic that goes on. So if you've ever heard that, it means that we go from idealizing people to devaluing them. So one minute, they're the best person we've ever met, they're awesome, we love them, they're incredible. And then maybe they do something that makes us think that they're going to reject us or leave us. So the next minute, they never listen to us. They don't hear us. They hate us. And so we hate them and we shut them off, right? So this is this idealizing and then devaluing. We also go back and forth between being overly involved in the lives of other people and then under involved. So we'll like blur boundaries or we'll just kind of shut off. We fear being rejected. Rejected, we fear being abandoned, and above all else, we fear being alone. This relationship stuff is really important because it's at the core of the disorder. I believe that. There are several other researchers out there that believe that. You know, it's just this fear of being alone is so intense that it drives all of our behaviors and all of our emotions. Are you wondering how I recorded this podcast? Well, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. Second, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere you can hear a podcast. You can make money from your podcast too with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So if you have something to say, I encourage you, be bold, own your story. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. All right, so the second sector of this term is affective lability. DBT people call it emotion regulation. So let's get into like, what does that actually mean? Think of it in three parts. Intense mood changes, intense anger, and feelings of emptiness. The mood changes are tricky, and that's what often leads us to be misdiagnosed with bipolar disorder. But borderline mood changes are different than bipolar disorder mood changes because they're not driven by some sort of internal clock. They're reactions to something social that happens, and they include a lot of anger and even rage. Borderline personality disorder is also characterized by this emptiness. So... It kind of feels like 
you've been alone and neglected your whole life and you're just waiting around for someone to say that they love you. But when they do actually say they love you, you don't believe them anyway. The third part of BPD is the behavioral stuff. Self-harm, suicidal ideation. People with BPD hurt themselves and they do it repeatedly. They cut, they burn. The more this happens, the more we feel suicidal and hopeless. But self-harm helps ease the emotional discomfort and it can act like a call for help so that the people that we want to support us are brought into our lives from that behavior. The second behavioral problem is impulsivity. Boy, we are impulsive. This is one battle I continue to fight in my own journey. I love anything and everything that feels good. When I had BPD, this impulsive drive looked differently than it does now. Now I just want to listen to music all day or be in the sun all day. Just be able to have like uninterrupted time doing stuff that feels good. But before, when I was in the throes of the disorder, it was promiscuity, driving way too fast, being too risky, substance abuse, and bulimia. My senior year of high school, I met this guy who was much older than me on the internet. We went to an anarchist convention called the Solidarity Movement at Penn State College. We ate donuts that were going to be thrown away out of dumpsters. We didn't shower. We smoked a lot of weed and we slept outside. I was 15. Talk about impulsive. Impulsivity aside, people with BPD have lapses in reality testing. Before it was called BPD, they used to think that BPD was actually an atypical form of schizophrenia because of these lapses in reality. So it's pretty serious stuff. Now, if you're listening and you have BPD and you're trying to figure all this stuff out, this part might be a little difficult to wrap your mind around and that's okay. We'll get more into what to do about it in the future episodes. But let's get back to this phrase, quote, lapses in reality testing, unquote. Y'all know what psychosis is, correct? So that's what they're saying here. They're saying there are periods of psychosis. So sometimes people with BPD have paranoid thoughts. Maybe they think someone's watching them or they hear voices and have trouble falling asleep. But usually, even though that's scary stuff, if somebody with BPD is put in a social environment where there's people around them and they're having a good time socially, those paranoid thoughts and those hallucinations, they go away. Because they go away, BPD is not an atypical form of schizophrenia. Although it has a negative stigma associated with it, it has a good prognosis. So if you're out there struggling with BPD, just know that you are not alone. And keep checking back for more episodes as we continue to dive in and dissect BPD so that we can provide each other with hope. That's it for today's episode. Tune in next time where I tell my story and recovery from BPD. Are you tired of feeling frustrated, resentful, or disconnected from your family, friends, and partner? Thrive Mind Body LLC Mindset Coaching and Counseling can help you. Visit us on the web at thriveonlinecounseling.com. Again, that's thriveonlinecounseling.com. And receive 10% off your first session pack with coupon code THRIVE10. See you then. Okay, thanks for listening. That was from Borderline and Beautiful, a production of Thrive Mind Body LLC, online coaching that helps frustrated individuals, resentful couples, and disconnected families navigate through tough times. Visit us on the web at thriveonlinecounseling.com. If you like this show, remember, you can hear it on Anchor or Apple Podcasts or Pocket Casts or any app that you use to listen to podcasts. Subscribe to get a new episode every Monday. If you want to get in touch, you can leave me a voice message. Some of you had some comments and questions from the last episodes, and I'd love to hear whatever questions you have too. Just download the Anchor mobile app, search for From Borderline to Beautiful, and tap the message button to send me a voice message. We'll have all those links in the show description. 
Okay, we made it. Thanks again for listening. I'm Rose Skeeters, and I'll be back next week with another episode of From Borderline to Beautiful. Talk to you then.